Tonight for dinner, we are making a casserole. It's got orzo, it's got vegetables, it's got ground beef. You could definitely do this with chicken. As a matter of fact, you can make this vegetarian and leave the meat out entirely, but we like to have all of it in one thing there. I can just throw it all in a casserole dish and then it's ready to go for dinner. Also, look how adorable this casserole dish is that my mom got me for my birthday. It says made with love by Amber feeding the birds. I think this is so cute. It's like sandblasted in there. It's really adorable. So we are going to start by getting all of our vegetables ready. My oven is actually already preheated to 400. May have preheated it just a little too early, but that's okay. We're going to be cutting up this zucchini and I do want it to be relatively small pieces. We're gonna keep everything in this pretty small except for the mushrooms. Now you may wanna make yours small, but my daughter does not like mushrooms. So I always try and leave them large enough so that she can pick them out. So I'm just doing small dicing. Even though we are going to be uh, tossing all of our vegetables in oil, I'm gonna go ahead and spray the pan just to make sure, cause it's brand new and I would like it to look nice at least for a little while. <laughs> Once we're done cutting, we can actually just go ahead and throw the vegetables into the casserole dish. You could add red pepper that you just chop up, just a fresh red pepper. I've got these roasted red bell pepper strips. So we're gonna add some of those and I'll chop those to the same size as well. Maybe a half cup or so. I'm just doing a very rough chop on these, okay? For the mushrooms, like I said, I'm leaving them big just because my daughter doesn't care for them. So we need about two cups of these. So I'll probably use almost this whole container. Any leftover mushrooms usually get put in some sort of breakfast casserole. Let's add some minced garlic and we need about four cloves. So definitely a decent amount. Some basil, I'm gonna add about one teaspoon of basil. Bring them in, but we like a lot of flavor. So we often add in even more than a, recipe, than a traditional recipe might call for. Add in some parsley, maybe a half teaspoon or so. We didn't add onion, obviously, but we're gonna add some onion powder, probably a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon of that. And then just a little bit of red pepper flakes. It's gonna add just a touch of heat. Go easy on this if you're not a huge fan of spice. And then obviously we need to add salt, roughly a teaspoon making sure that this, this salt is gonna bring out the flavor of all these amazing vegetables. Now, take your oil, so mine is avocado oil, take whatever kind you use, and anywhere from one to three tablespoons, I usually go less when it says oil, so mine is probably more like a tablespoon and a half. Toss that around. I've got my tongs, so we'll just do that. But you wanna make sure everything has the oil, and all the flavors, all those spices all over. And my, like I said, my oven is preheated to 400 degrees. So this part, we're basically gonna roast the vegetables before we assemble the rest of the casserole. This is gonna go in for about 10 to 15 minutes. While this is in the oven and before we add the rest of the ingredients, I am going to brown up some ground beef. I feel like Italian sausage would be delicious in this, but I already had ground beef thawed and ready to go. So that's what we're gonna go with for this time. Saute up this, this is an 85-15. And honestly, you don't even have to completely cook it. We just wanna get a bit of a sear on it because this is gonna go into the casserole and I mean, it's gonna cook for a while inside of the casserole too. Also, while this is cooking, let's add some of those same flavors into the ground beef. Okay, so some parsley, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder. You guys know I always do this. I have to season whatever I'm cooking. And we'll toss in a little bit of salt. That's about all that I'm gonna cook this. As you can see, it's pretty much done, but I don't wanna overdo it. So let's take that off the heat. Toss those vegetables. And we are going to add in some spinach. All you have to do is toss it in there and it will start to wilt right away. So about two cups. Good Smells good, right? Oh, 
I have a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. We're gonna add this in. You can see the spinach is nice and wilted. It really doesn't take long. It just starts to wilt because that pan is hot. I'm also adding about a cup and a half of ricotta cheese. I'm gonna reserve just a little bit because I think it'll be really pretty to dollop some on. One thing about this casserole is it has all the colors, which you guys know I love. I love seeing all the different colors. I have one pound of orzo. We're gonna add the entire pound in. This is gonna serve at least six people, probably more to be honest. Oh, ground beef, hello. Let's incorporate in that ground beef. I have a feeling that I'm also not gonna need to, gonna need to make dinner tomorrow night <laughs> because this is going to be a decent amount here. Oh. Then we add two and a half cups of broth. This is a beef bone broth. You can add chicken broth, chicken stock, whatever you prefer, or a beef stock. I'm using beef because the orzo, uh, because we added ground beef. So that was two cups. Let's do another half. Right on the money, man. That's what I like to see. To mix all of this together, we'll get all that orzo spread out. Make sure it's kind of covered in the broth. We're gonna put this in the oven for 15 minutes, uncovered. We're not covering it at all. I'm gonna take it out, stir it, and then it's gonna go for an additional 10 to 15 minutes, making sure that that orzo gets al dente. My 15 minute timer just went off, so let's give this a mix. Stir it a bit. Looking really good. Okay, so now that we've stirred, it's gonna go back in for about another 10 to 15 minutes, just continuing to let that orzo soften up. And then we'll be ready to add some cheese. Oh yeah. Okay, let's give it another stir. I actually don't know that this stir is necessary, but I'm just gonna make sure. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this mozzarella and just add dollops throughout, okay? Let's also sprinkle with some mozzarella. Overall, maybe a cup all over. And I don't really want a thick layer of cheese on the top because we've got all these beautiful colors underneath and I kind of want that to show through so I'm gonna keep it lighter on the layer of cheese. This is gonna go back in for a final bake, about five minutes, then I'm gonna switch to broil and just let it broil for a couple of minutes just to brown the cheese on the top, and then it's ready. It's ready to serve. Look how good this looks, all these beautiful colors. I love seeing that. You guys know that's one of my favorite things when I can look at a casserole or something on a plate and see all the different colors. Let's give it a try with that added ground beef that we added in there, that ricotta that I put on the top, mozzarella, we've got zucchini, I mean, all the things in this recipe. It's very good. The only thing that I would change is, uh, you guys know I love fire roasted diced tomatoes and that's what I put in here. If I could find petite diced fire roasted tomatoes, if I could find petite diced, fire roasted tomatoes, that's what I would use. I do think that the diced tomatoes are a little bit too large just because of everything else that's in here. They're all smaller diced, but the flavors are good. And I would say if you can't find the petite diced fire roasted, then just use a regular petite diced because the smaller tomatoes I think would be better. Other than that though, it's got great flavor. We're gonna make some crispy tacos and then we're gonna make a ranch dipping sauce that goes along with them. So delicious. Um, you can make this vegetarian, vegan, whatever you choose, but we're gonna use ground beef. The first thing we need to do is cook our ground beef. So I'm gonna head over to the stove top. I'm gonna use one pound of ground beef. I don't think we're gonna be using all of the ground beef in this recipe, so I'll reserve it and we'll probably use it in something like chili because all of these ingredients that I'm gonna put in the ground beef work perfectly with chili. So I'm gonna be adding some pepper, some salt, some chili powder, you can add garlic powder, onion powder, all those flavors that you love and just cook up that ground beef, then you can set it to the side. 
Next, we need to take one can of refried beans and we are going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, roughly a teaspoon, roughly, ooh, roughly a teaspoon of onion powder. And I am on a time crunch because my son has baseball tonight. Chili powder. We need to add about a teaspoon of chili powder. This is a new one and it's just struggling to come out because it's nice and full, which I'm not complaining about that for sure. Let's mix that together so that it's ready to go. You can also add a pinch of salt to this if you want. I don't feel like it's necessary just based on all of the other flavors that we're going to have. And the next thing we want to do before we end up making up these tacos is to make our little creamy ranch, kind of spicy. If we, if you want to add spice, you can. The dipping sauce or the drizzle sauce that's going to go with these. I'm going to add about a half cup of, this is Greek yogurt. You could use mayo, but this is going to make it a little, or on the, a little on the healthier side. Just about a tablespoon of milk. Adding a half teaspoon of onion powder, so sticking with those same flavors. A half teaspoon of garlic powder. Again, same flavors. A half teaspoon of chili powder. So not exactly a ranch. You wouldn't typically put chili powder in ranch, but it is really good. Let's do a pinch of salt. You can also add pepper, and I'm gonna add a little bit of sriracha. Okay, you don't have to add this. If you don't want it to be spicy, don't add that, okay? It's not gonna be really spicy because I'm not adding a ton. That's maybe like a teaspoon and a half. So let's start the mix here. I'm gonna put some into, oh, I haven't finished making it yet. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. You can use dried parsley, that's totally fine, but I have fresh, you guys know I love to add fresh when I'm able to. So we're going to chop up some fresh parsley. And I'm using the herb scissors that you've seen me use before that are really, really convenient and I'm gonna make a mess. I take some of this and add it to dipping bowls so that each one of us will have a little bit that we can actually dip the tacos, but I want to reserve some, and I could make up more if I needed it to, but I'm gonna reserve a little bit because I think that it will look really pretty with a drizzle. So I'm gonna add a little bit more milk to thin it out, and you'll see what I mean by this once we get there. Okay, that's ready, so I'm gonna set all of that to the side. We can put away some of this because we're done with it. Before I put all the stuff on my cutting board that I'm gonna be using, let's cut this lime just into wedges. It's mainly just for the serving, but it will add flavor too. You can obviously just use it to kind of squeeze lime on each one of the tacos. We're just gonna put these in a bowl so that they'll be ready to go. I've got some flour tortillas. Let's lay them out. That looks like I'm gonna be able to do about six at a time. We're spreading the refried beans onto one side. Let's add some of that ground beef to each taco. This, these are so simple. They just look a little more elevated, especially in the way that you can serve them. Okay, I'm gonna prep the rest of these and then we're gonna head over to the griddle. Now obviously you could use this like a quesadilla press and you could press it over and just do three at a time. In the interest of seeing if I can get all of these done at the same time, I am laying all six of them down and then we'll flip them all at the same time as well. thing here is that you just took regular taco night 
and took it to another level. You just elevated tacos just in the way that they look. Same basic ingredients, but how cool is it to just transform it and make it something just a little bit better? Also, dipping options. Make some salsa, some guacamole. You've got this spicy ranch that you can have on the side. I mean, this is just so good. Okay, I'm definitely thinking that this is a fork meal. It's really high back here. I like that. It's taco night, but better. And honestly, I was over there cooking it and realized that I didn't add cheese. I don't even think that it needs it. It's all the flavors are really good with those spices that we added in to the mixtures. Very, very good. We are using our muffin tin to make many meat loaves. We are going to just be using a ground beef mixture. I love adding things like bison or pork, whatever kind of meatloaf mixture you and your family enjoy, that's what you should go for. So I'm adding a pound of ground beef here. I like to add two eggs to our meatloaf. We make meatloaf so many different ways. Sometimes I make it with panko, sometimes with breadcrumbs, sometimes with oatmeal or oats. I mean, we just, we change it up every single time. Now, I happen to have about a fourth bag left of this herb stuffing by Pepperidge Farm. So we're gonna go ahead and use this up because I don't want it to go to waste. And I mean, what am I gonna use a fourth bag of, of stuffing for? So I'm taking my meat mallet here in this bag. I'm just gonna leave it in here. You can transfer it to another bag if you want. And we're just gonna crush it. Now, this is the cubed kind. You wouldn't have to do this if you had the blue bag. Let's start by adding, I don't know, maybe a cup. We'll mix that together and see how it is. I have about a fourth cup left, so if we need to add more, I can add more. Now, when we use stuffing, I traditionally don't add very much salt, if any at all, but I do like to add other spices. So onion powder is a great one. Probably a half teaspoon to a teaspoon, just depending on what you love. And obviously you can just cut up onion and add that to the mixture if that's something that you want. Same thing with garlic powder. Also feel free to just use minced garlic. And then I love adding Italian seasoning. So good in this recipe. And this is about a teaspoon, but you're also gonna get a lot of these flavors from that stuffing mix. So honestly, you could make this like a four ingredient recipe if you wanted to and just add the stuffing mix and not any of these other things. I'm gonna add some basil just because we like these flavors. So feel free to add whatever you love. You wanna go out? Go on. I like to add a little bit of Worcestershire to our mixture, maybe a teaspoon overall. So now we just combine all of this together. You can do this with your hands, you can do this with a mixture, you do whatever you want to do as far as this goes. Now we are gonna make little miniature meat loaves. Feel free to not, you don't have to make these in a muffin tin if you don't want to. I just think it's a, it's a play on this. It's just changing it up a little bit so it's a little bit different. I've made meatloaf on a sheet pan before which was excellent by the way. If you wanna see it, I'll have it linked right here. And then I've made meatloaf in the crock pot right here which you guys, actually might be one of the best ways that we've made meatloaf. It was absolutely delicious. I am gonna go ahead and just add the rest of the stuffing mix. Let's spray the muffin pan. Just scoop it in and kind of press. This is perfect, it made nine, which means we will each get two for dinner and then my always hungry, ever-growing sun will probably get a third. These are going in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Now we will take these out at 20 minutes and put the sauce on the top, the meatloaf sauce, and then we'll continue to cook. Now, honestly, for dinner tonight, I just wanna change things up a little bit, but one great thing about making meatloaf in these little tins like this is it freezes so well. It freezes perfectly. So if you need lunch options where your kids can just take things out of the freezer and they can reheat, or if you want to bake this and then have it available for dinner weeks ahead, you can do that. This is a great way to meal prep as well. Now, whenever I make the sauce topping, I typically stick with the same 
type of ingredients that we already put in the meatloaf so everything works together. We're gonna add some ketchup to this measuring cup here and I'm probably gonna start with probably a half cup. I don't know that we'll need more than that. I don't like mine to have a lot of sauce, but obviously this is one of those things where if you like a lot of sauce, then just make a lot of sauce, just make more. I do like to add a little bit of barbecue sauce to mine, so maybe two tablespoons or so. Totally optional ingredient, obviously. Some brown sugar. So I usually do about a tablespoon. Let's go a little bit more, about a tablespoon and a half. Again, adding some Worcestershire, about, probably about a teaspoon again. We really like Worcestershire though. If you don't like it, then obviously take that back a bit. And then I'm gonna add garlic powder again. So about a half teaspoon. Same with onion powder, about a half teaspoon and then some Italian seasoning, just cause we like it, about a half teaspoon. So make this whatever you like, okay? It does not have to be the way that I made it. Another thing that I've done occasionally is add some apple cider vinegar in there, which is another great addition to this. So we just mix all of this together. And then when my timer is up, we can add this to the meatloaf and cook it a little more. All right, so the timer went off. Now we're gonna add some of that sauce to each one. This is gonna go back in for five to 10 minutes or so. You know, you want it to get kind of brown on the top with this sauce. I might even put this in for five minutes and then let it go under the broiler because I like it when the sauce gets like done. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. What is it? It gets almost brown on the top, the sauce does. So that's my preference, but obviously you do whatever you love as far as this goes. So back in for five and then I'll turn the broil on. Let's give a meatloaf, a mini meatloaf a try. See what the taste is like. It's really good. I also like the little crispiness that the edges get. It just adds a different combination of texture, which I'm a huge fan of when it comes to really any type of food. I like the different textures and flavors and all that kind of stuff. So I really like this. It's good with that stuffing mix in there. Obviously you can change up a recipe to whatever meatloaf recipe you enjoy and make it here in a muffin tin. And then you just have a different presentation. Our verse today comes from 1 Peter 4.16. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, I would love if you would subscribe and stick around, hit that subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell so you'll know each time I upload a new video. If you liked this video that you just watched, I highly suggest that you check out the one listed above. That's gonna give you even more encouragement and inspiration in the kitchen. Have a great week.